despite the fact that most of the scientists the world has ever known are alive and working today, despite the fact that this nation's own scientific manpower is doubling every 12 years, despite that the vast stretches of the unknown and unanswered and unfinished far outstrip our collective comprehension, no man can fully grasp how far or how fast we have come. This is a breathtaking pace, and such a pace cannot help but create new ills as it dispels the old, new ignorance, new problems, new dangers. Surely, the opening vistas of space promise high cost and hardship as well as high reward. So it is not surprising that some would have us stay where we are a little longer, to rest, to wait. But this city of Houston, this state of Texas, this country of the United States was not built by those who waited and rested and wished to look behind them. This country was conquered by those who moved forward, and so will space. William Bradford, speaking in 1630 of the founding of the Plymouth Bay Colony, said that all great and honorable actions are accompanied with great difficulty, and both must be enterprised and overcome with answerable courage. Now the exploration of space will go ahead, whether we join in it or not, and it is one of the great adventures of all time. And no nation which expects to be the leader of other nations can expect to stay behind in this race for space. This generation does not intend to founder in the backwash of the coming age of space. We mean to be part of it. We mean to lead it. For the eyes of the world now look into space, to the moon and the planets beyond. But why some say the moon? Why choose this as our goal? And they may well ask, why climb the highest mountain? Why 35 years ago fly the Atlantic? Why does Rice play Texas? That's when everybody laughs. <laughs> we choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we are unwilling to postpone. And one that we intend to win, and the others too. But if I were to say my fellow citizens at Johnson Space Center, among the Cooperative Education Corps, that we shall send to the moon, 240,000 miles from the control station in Houston, a giant rocket, more than 300 feet tall, the length of this football field, made of new metal alloys, some of which have not yet been invented, capable of sending heat and stress, several times more than has ever been experienced, carrying all the equipment, needed for propulsion, guidance, control, communication, food and survival, on an untried mission to an unknown celestial body, and then to return it safely to Earth, re-entering the atmosphere at speeds of over 25,000 miles per hour, causing heat about half that of the temperature of the sun, almost as hot as it is here today. And to do all this, and to do it right, and to do it first, before this decade is out, then we must be bold. Many years ago, the great British explorer George Mallory, who was to die on Mount Everest, was asked why he wanted to climb it. He said, because it is there. Well, space is there, and we're going to climb it, and the moon and the planets are there and new hopes for knowledge and peace are there. And therefore, as we set sail, we ask God's blessing on the most hazardous 
and dangerous and greatest adventure on which man has ever embarked. Thank you. I'll be your chair.